you said some things about women, obviously, throughout the course of your 60 years of us studying you. And one of those things is about how women dress and how we present ourselves and being virtuous and not being stripped down and not distracting men. But some women would say, well, listen, I should be able to dress however I want to dress. It shouldn't matter what I have on. I should command that same type of respect. And that is something that's been going on. They've had the slut walk that's been going on in different countries and nations. And I would love to know how what you have to say about that today. I would say to my dear sisters, look, I, I'm in love with you. I love you like I love life itself. I respect and honor you because that's the way I've been taught and trained. But my dear sisters, you have to learn how to respect yourself. These things that make you attractive to men, they're called in the Quran your adornments. Your breast adorns your body. The beauty of your hair is an adornment. Men don't freak out <coughs> over our hair unless, you know, we're a little strange, but. <laughs> but, <laughs> but a woman's hair is a thing of beauty your hair beautifies you your breast is what we all nursed from when we came in this world unless mother was too busy and you and I became bonded not to our mother's breasts, but to a plastic bottle. Mm. Your thighs. We came <laughs> from between your thighs into this world. And somebody had to get between your thighs to produce life. You are not just a woman. You are a sacred vessel. I'm not trying to put our women on a pedestal that don't, they don't deserve to be on. No man is a man without a woman. It's a woman that helps the man to be a man. A man that don't have a woman don't know if he's one. What do I mean by that? A woman will test you to see if you are what you say you are. Mm. Any woman that you fall in love with, she love you too, but she going to try you. That's her nature. She got to know that she can depend on you. She got to know that you stand up for her. She got to know that you back up the children that she brings in the world for us. So now... Look at the movies of Jesus. You see women around Jesus. How do they dress? What do they look like around the master? Their hair's covered. You don't see them with their breast exposed or the ornamental effect of their hips and buttocks. You don't see that. They're covered around Jesus. Why? I mean, Mary Magdalene might have been uncovered when she met him. Mm -hmm. But after he got finished teaching her, she knew her value. Now, as a woman, yes, this is your body. You have a right to dress as you please. But, you know, you got to think. Who is the teacher and the trainer of us? We came up under our former slave masters. And look how he used to dress his woman. Go and look at the old movies. When we were slaves on the plantation, she didn't come out in no burlap. She came out 
dressed and her dress covered her body. The slave was looking at her too. Miss Ann looked pretty good. After slavery was over, watch how the dress of the women changed. Watch how the length of the dress got shorter. And women used to think they were undressed if the, the dress came to the calf. Now I've seen sisters with a dress on that is so short when she sits, I watch them on TV. You got to sit to the side. <laughs> <laughs> Drape that leg over. I don't know how the hell they do it. but <laughs> <laughs> To cover up heaven. It is heaven. Heaven. Mm -hmm. And as a man, uh, we are the aggressive fellas. That's the way God made nature. If we are natural man, we are attracted to a woman. You are our natural partner in the act of procreation. Now there's a time and a place for everything. But when a fine looking woman with a fine looking form walks down the street a man could be working with a jackhammer. <laughs> <laughs> and when he spies that woman, he'll watch her as she walks. Because if you don't have on something that holds, um, makes uh, the, body, the buttocks firm, you see a light basketball going. Motion. <laughs> what, did I say something wrong? No. You are honest, speaking the truth. When we look at that up and down, you know, mm -hmm. it's motion. It's attracting. We look. What kind of thought comes up in your mind when that woman is that fine? Talk to me. You don't say, oh, what a great creature. Like a dog, you may say. Man, I sure'd like to have some of that. Yeah, that's not what you want. But it, don't, it don't give us the right to disrespect them either, though. I think that's what a lot of girls are saying. They can wear what they want, and it, and that doesn't ent entitle us to disrespect them. Well, to not be judged on the way that you're dressed either. It's okay. That's fine. But you invite the rapist. You invite the pervert. Do you know how many men that are out of work that just stand around on the corner watching your daughters coming home from school? Today with the hormonal uh, things that they're putting in foods, in the beef, in the lamb, in the chicken, in the pork, these hormones, when you eat the meat, you find a nine-year-old daughter with breasts bigger than her mother's, hips wider than her mother's, and men haven't got nothing to do but sit and watch you go and come from school, and some of them start plotting immediately. How can I get that? If you take a little time and watch forensics, and see what men, sick-minded men do. And I don't know whether it's wise for women to feed the sickness that's in the man. 